the right honorable deputy speaker honorable ministers including our right honorable minister for east africa my colleagues the pss and all of you business people from all over the world i'm happy to be here my name is ramadan gobi i work as secretary to treasury for the republic of uganda i send uh, uh, all the greetings from our minister who is not uh, able to be here but uh, the ministry is here and the government is fully here I would like ladies and gentlemen to start by informing you that this summit is actually coming on the heels of very important developments in Africa and uh, these are highlighting also Uganda's age as a partner for progress for both our governments, but also for the businesses and uh, for travelers. In May this year, Uganda was awarded the best investment destination in Africa. And two months later, in July, Uganda was selected to host the African Humanitarian Agency. And this agency is a specialized technical agency for the African Union, and it is charged with the responsibility to coordinate and provide humanitarian responses in, in terms of um, all of those who need humanitarian services across Africa by the member states. And Uganda's infrastructure and its established legal and institutional frameworks were cited to be among the factors that made them to select the country. The economy of Uganda, I wanted also to tell you, it has fully recovered from the various shocks which hit the global economy. And uh, this last quarter, the GDP grew by 6.7%. And uh, it's projected even to grow uh, better in the coming period. We have also seen that the annual growth itself, when you annualize it, is about 6%. And to put it in context, the average for Sub-Saharan Africa was 3.8% last year, while the global average growth was 3.2%. The inflation has been contained within the target. And uh, the shilling is stable against all major currencies thanks to the strong performance of our exports, the foreign direct investments, but also diaspora remittances. The export earnings have grown to $7.5 billion from $4.9 billion in 2023. FDI inflow is now at $3.01 billion as at the end of April this year, making Uganda the fourth top country in attracting FDI in Africa. Diaspora remittances have also been registered at $1.43 billion. I'll bore you with these numbers because they matter a lot to business people. We are currently putting final touches on our fourth national development plan, which is anchored on a tenfold growth strategy. We want to make Uganda a $5 billion economy by 2040. And the key priority areas we are targeting are four. We call them the ATMs. The previous speakers talked about SWIFT, and we all know ATMs, their main job is to mint money, 
but they mint money for you if you have put it there. So our ATMs are agro-industrialization. We have tourism. We have mineral-based industrialization, including oil and gas, and then science, technology, and innovation, including ICT. Those are the four areas that Uganda is targeting to accelerate growth and turn Uganda into a $5 billion economy. Apart from the ATMs, we are inviting the world to invest or co-invest with us in the following areas. In construction, particularly roads and bridges, lairies and airports, as well as housing and urban infrastructure. Electricity generation, electricity transmission, and electricity distribution is the second area. Social sector. We have education, health care, water and environment. We also prioritizing irrigation infrastructure and also we are looking at industrial park infrastructure development among others. Our average return on investment in Uganda now stands at 14%, having increased from 12% in 2017. And at 14%, Uganda is one of the countries with the highest return on investment. The macroeconomy is managed well and stable. You will find that government is also proactive in terms of promoting private investment. We are a pro-private sector country and also we support a lot those who are investing in the priority areas with a number of incentives. You don't need to ask for them, they are already mainstreamed in the laws. The weather is the best. Richard Bangs recently summarized it succinctly, saying that, and I quote, if the natural assets of the continent were poured into a small bowl, the vessel could be Uganda. Why did I come to UK? I, I, I rarely travel. I, I don't like traveling a lot, but I said I must be here. Of course, our historical strong ties between Uganda and the UK are well known. The trade between Uganda and the UK has crossed a hundred million dollars mark last financial year. However, whereas Uganda's exports to the UK have improved in the recent years, they remain generally low. The trade balance also remains in favor of the UK with the trade deficit widening from 44.7 million dollars in 2020 to $71.6 million last year. Our main export to UK are mainly food, bananas and plantains, tubers, coffee, fruits and vegetables, as well as some of the precious minerals, among others. However, on the other hand, our imports from the UK comprise mainly manufactured items. Secondly, the UK is Uganda's second largest FDI source after the Netherlands. Recently, the FDI inflows from the UK amounted $1.1 billion, accounting for 37% of the total FDI inflows into Uganda. To date, 495 investment projects have been licensed from UK in Uganda, in the areas of agro-industry, tourism, ICT, healthcare, 
education services, manufacturing, real estate, and transport and logistics. The operational companies have created cumulatively nearly 80,000 jobs. The FDI remains the leading form of external financing from the UK to Uganda and has helped us to close the infrastructure gap. Thirdly, the UK remains the largest contributor of tourists to Uganda. As I informed you already, in Uganda we have a mission. And our mission is to expand our economy to a $500 billion economy in the next 15 years. Our plan is to use the ATMs, as I've told you, to propel this growth. Therefore, I am here, ladies and gentlemen, to invite you to partake in this beautiful dream we are having. Come to Uganda and invest. Provide a market for Uganda's exports. But also, I would like you to come and partake in our beautiful ambition by investing, providing a market for our exports, but also by visiting and seeing the wonders of nature and biodiversity, culture and experience. I am here for markets, for investments, and for tourism. The next 15 years are going to be interestingly lucrative for our partners because the numbers look pretty good in those areas I've mentioned. And in addition, the economy is synonymous with stability because our macroeconomy is stable and inst inst institutionalized to remain so. The business environment is liberalized. We are strategically located, as they have already told you. And above all, the people of Uganda are exceptionally hospitable, young, English-speaking, trainable, and also their incomes are improving now. We are also gold medalists, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> At several international competitions, we have won five Olympic gold medals. We have won 16 Commonwealth medals and also two international athletic competition medals. And our record is that, as I already told you, we have one of the fastest growing economies, not only in Africa, but in the world. And uh, the Center for International Development at Harvard is projecting Uganda to become among the fastest growing economies for the next decade, ending 2031. We are also selected among the 10 countries in Africa for industrial development in the 2022 Africa industrialization index by the AFD. Uganda was also uh, ranked as the country with the fastest growing financial sector within East Africa and fourth in Africa by the ABSA Africa Financial Markets Index for last year. I could go on and on, but I don't want to bore you with some of the things we have done. Let me end by giving you our commitment as government of Uganda in a number of areas. Number one, in strengthening and deepening capital markets. We have put in place a deal flow facility which identifies and supports SMEs to become investment ready. The DFF uh, is an investment matchmaking facility uh, funded by EU, and uh, we are working with the Uganda Capital Markets Authority to ensure that we deepen the capital markets. Number two, we've amended our tax regime, as the Deputy Speaker 
has informed you they support us. Our tax regime has been amended this year to include the tax exemptions for income derived from private equity or venture capital, as well as income derived from disposal of government securities on the secondary market. You don't pay tax going forward. We are also facilitating formalization of businesses through business licensing reform and e-government. We are closing the infrastructure gaps in the economy, thereby lowering transaction costs in the economy. We are also implementing a competitive investment incentive regime, which is quite generous and includes both tax and non-tax incentives. Government is also making measures to de-risk the economy. The macro risk has been sustainably addressed through putting in place a robust monetary and fiscal policy coordination framework. That's why my, my governor of the central bank is not here with me, because I'm fully representing the central bank. We are fully coordinated. The central bank is independent, and the fiscal rules are guided by the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility. We have very low inflation, a stable currency, and a low fiscal deficit, not because of good luck, but because of these things. The public debt risk has been mitigated through adherence to inter international debt sustainability frameworks. At 47.9% debt-to-GDP ratio, Uganda has one of the lowest debt-to-GDP ratios in Africa, which is quite far below than the thresholds that are allowed by the international uh, standards. On the market risk, we are addressing them through negotiation of market access for export and also for deepening economic integration, as the Minister for East Africa has already informed you. We are also continuously working on business licensing reform for ensuring that our businesses are finding it easy to do business. I take the honor, ladies and gentlemen, to invite you to Africa, but in particular to Uganda, to do business with us also get us markets for our exports, particularly value-added exports, but also come and visit Uganda as tourists. It's the best place you will ever be. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of coming together, there's been talk about an East African currency similar to the euro. Now these days in the world that we live in, we don't know what is real news and what is fake news. Hopefully we'll get the real news here today. And you have just the right people here to be able to answer that question. Um, uh, since that's a key question, let me get a quick answer from uh, Honorable uh, Prime Minister. No, no I, I, I want to take that one first so that we, we build up because it's key to key to the question about Africa as a business destination. Uh, thank you very much. I didn't get your name, but thank you for the question. The East African Common Market is in place. We have a protocol since uh, 2009. And the main thing is to make the movement of people, goods and services easier, and also to permit uh, uh, citizens and residents to reside in any of the eight countries but also to be able to establish businesses. So it gives uh, an opportunity for our uh, countrymen and countrywomen to move easily across the borders, to go be able to work, if you're Uganda, to be able to work in Rwanda, to be able to work in South Sudan, to be able to work in the DRC, uh, and so forth, and uh, so on and so forth. So yes, it is there since 2009. Thank you. Thank, th th thank you so much. And, and I wanted to add to that, that uh, I oh, mentioned the earlier. Yes, uh, they showed the currency. We, we have four pillars of integration. The first was the customs union, it's in place. The common market, second. The third pillar is the monetary union. And finally, the political uh, federation. 
Now we had a target of 2024 for the monetary union of uh, all the all the countries. We have been having some difficulties on the convergence criteria, so we have not yet met that deadline. But it's our intention to have uh, 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 one the East African uh, uh, Monetary Institute, then the East African Central Bank that will issue the common currency for all of us. 2030. I don't agree with that, but that's what our experts say. <laughs> I don't like it, but that's what they say. <laughs> 2031. That's the target. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. I want to assure you that we have all of the answers here today. Um, and just to supplement, I said earlier that I run a business called NFT Consult. We are in all East African countries apart from the last two. And we've been running that business for the last 19 years. And there's no problem. Money moves across freely. Then I come to uh, Dr. Ramadan. You... In the energy sector, you have to raise lots of financing to support the oil and gas sector. Um, there is the upstream work, there is the refinery, there is the crude oil pipeline, uh, there is transmission of electricity, there is the generation plants that should be coming up shortly. So you have a constrained envelope. Um, we just want to hear from you. What are your plans to address this? And how do you see yourself uh, being able to raise the capacity of government to deliver on these projects? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the plan is simple, is to raise money. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to raise money. First, we have uh, our traditional partners we are working with. They could be um, not interested in certain areas, but definitely it's a value chain. They support those areas where uh, they are comfortable. I'm talking of the World Bank, I'm talking of uh, with its uh, sister IFC. We are working closely uh, together, especially in building infrastructure and also supporting the private sector that is uh, partaking in this. But also, we are now working very aggressively on public-private partnerships. Our frameworks are ready. They have been tested. We have seen where there are challenges in delaying um, processing of projects by especially the private sector, and we are addressing them. But we are also coming at a time when the green financing aspect is in-house and uh, we've been able to work on the fiscal frameworks. In my ministry now we have a climate financing unit, full-fledged, and uh, we are working closely with our multilateral partners to fine-tune it and mobilize financing from that angle as well. But the big money comes from the private sector because that's where the money is. And uh, I am, I'm here really to interest the audience here in the opportunities my minister has been talking about. And I think he made a point of um, risk aversion. There's a lot of risk aversion in the West. There are so many opportunities, and Africa now is the land of these opportunities, when if you look around very closely. And there are those people who are taking advantage of these opportunities. They are mainly coming from other places. I don't see them here. From the East, from the Middle East, and they are coming and we are doing business with them. I would really want to say, if you want to make money in the next two decades, get to the plane, come to Africa, we process for you these opportunities. If you wait on, these opportunities will not wait. They are going to certain categories of people. This is the message I want to be clear in the room. 
I see uh, a lot of, uh, you know, caution and carefulness and so many questions. There are people who don't ask those questions and they are getting these opportunities. I want to tell you the truth. And um, we are closing a lot of big deals in Africa, particularly now in Uganda, with some particular kinds of people. When I talk like this, I'm sure everybody in the room knows what I'm talking about. And um, I would want our traditional partners in development, the United Kingdom, to take full advantage of the opportunities before us. And we work together to develop these ATMs to bridge the infrastructure gap in Africa. Talk about the infrastructure gap, for example. In the past two decades, who has played the biggest role? Where has this money come from that has built the infrastructure in Africa? Because we have closed it, I think, in the last two decades, much faster than in the previous century. And uh, we have now electricity, we have highways connecting all of corners of the country. We have um, uh, the railway lines which are being revamped. We have the IT, uh, you know, national backbones, fiber laid across the continent and younger people uh, connecting themselves in the gig economy and so on. This man has come from different places. And I would want to encourage the investors in this part of the world to really pick a leaf from this and we move uh, together. Mm.